I'm still scared of doing videos, but people keep encouraging me to do it. Um, shout out to DJ at the Verizon store if you're watching, and uh, Frankie Rodriguez, who I spoke to today at the vegan snack uh, snack event that Roz put on. Um, so I'm just gonna, I've been wanting to do a video about my, um, or a blog post about my trip to Seattle recently, my practice trip. And it's been more than a week now since I did it, and I've been putting it off because there's like so much I want to share. So I'm gonna just try to do it in a video. I'm gonna try to keep it to five minutes, and I know that's probably still long, but I know some of you wanted to hear how this trip went. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do this in a video. I do want to show off my cool psychologist t-shirt that some of you have already seen. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm open to feedback on um, technical aspects of this video as well. So uh, about a week ago, I went on a practice trip for my big trip, and I went to um, Tacoma, and Vashon Island and Seattle and I used the train and three different boats and my uh, Bronson bike of course with the chubby trailer and it was awesome everything went really great so uh, well there were actually a few mishaps and I do want to talk about that because I feel like it was a really good um, learning experience for me and which is what I was hoping to get as well as just enjoying the trip so I made a train trip from Portland to Tacoma. I was gonna do Portland to Olympia and then bicycle the 33 miles to Tacoma, but my ankle had been giving me trouble for like a month. And I was really concerned that if I pushed it, it might harm things. And as it turned out, um, my ankle miraculously healed itself halfway through this trip. So that was incredible and a great sign. I was really glad that I hadn't canceled the trip, which had crossed my mind. Um, but I wore a little brace for the first couple of days, but then I found I just didn't need it. It just stopped hurting. So that was amazing. Anyway, so I took the train from, um, Portland to Tacoma. Halfway through the train trip, I realized that I had forgotten my helmet and I had just bought a new helmet like a week earlier because the other one that I had was too old. I thought, oh, I need a new one for this big trip. So I got the new one and then I just forgot it. So that was ridiculous. So I was like on the train, like, oh, Googling you know, the place I was going to stay in um, Tacoma and where could I find a nearby bike shop so I could go get another another helmet. So I get to Tacoma. It's a little bit harrowing getting to the uh, Warm Showers host, which Ryan, if you're watching this, my Warm Showers host, she was awesome. Uh, it was my first Warm Showers experience and it was it was couldn't have gone better. But anyway, getting uh, using the Google directions, the Google bike directions to get from the Tacoma train station to the house um, it took me through a lot of, um, it was trying to send me across like a freeway on-ramp, which I thought seemed really unsafe, so I didn't do that, but then it was taking me through a lot of construction, and of course there's a lot of hills, and then there was like broken glass in the bike lane, and there were big trains, I mean, uh, trucks zooming by, so I was kind of scared, but um, I made it, which was great, and Ryan was actually having a, um, she was on a bike trip of her own, so she had a friend come down, Craig from Seattle, who was also a big uh, bike guy and knew all about trailers and everything. And he came down to kind of greet me. It was it was really wonderful. Um, as soon as I got there, he's like, where's your helmet? And I was like, oh, I forgot it. So then he was like, oh, well, I'll just go to the bike shop with you. And so we both just hopped on our bikes and uh, rode to the bike shop to get me a helmet. So that was just really cool. Then after that, I went to uh, Quickie 2, which is my favorite vegan restaurant in Tacoma. And if you're ever in Tacoma, you've got to go there. It's a black-owned restaurant, and it's like sandwiches, like really decadent sandwiches. It's so good. So I went there and had a great dinner. Then I went back. Um, the next day, I went down to the Japanese Garden in Tacoma, which was really cool. Then biked back up a different way to avoid the really steepest hills. And I went to the co-op and got some cliff bars. And then I packed up and uh, went down to the ferry dock, which is also right down near the Japanese garden. Got on the ferry over to Vashon Island, and then I called my friend Diane, who I was gonna be staying with, and I'm gonna put a link to the, an interview that I did with Diane many years ago here on the, this blog. And um, she's an amazing person, and I hope that you'll click through and read the interview because she's really just a, a tremendous person. Anyway, I called her as soon as I got there. She told me the least hilly way to get to her, but it was still hilly. And so I was definitely getting some, uh, some practice of, of hill work. Um, but there was uh, an amazing cherry tree along the way and I just pulled over and feasted and it was, it was, it was great. It was uh, a good way to spend cherry season on Bashan Island. So I spent the evening, I spent the night with her and her uh, partner, her husband, um, Michael, who they both do amazing work together with environmental stuff. And I got to look at their new um, forested area that they just, um, that 
that, that where they live, which is really amazing. There was a stream running through there and everything. Um, so that was lovely. And then the next morning, I biked down to the other ferry dock and went over to West Seattle and biked all along the waterfront. And my sister and her partner had made me a really cool Google map to show me the least hilly way, again, in a very hilly city, but the least hilly way to get to their place, which was really nice. And it took me along a lot of bike paths in Seattle, which I didn't realize they had so many like dedicated bike paths along their many waterways. And so that was really cool. And I even took a water taxi, which I didn't even know they had. And it was a little bit challenging to navigate the bike and the trailer on and off of the water taxi, but um, I did it, so that was more practice. Oh, I forgot to mention, this was the other cool thing that happened in Tacoma. Just as I was leaving the B&B or the, the warm showers place, and I was getting ready to go down to the ferry, I had another mishap. If you read my um, blog uh, about a month ago when I went to Corvallis, I had trouble um, where my trailer fell off the, uh, the bike and I couldn't get it back on the hitch and I was starting to freak out and then I was like, Marin, don't freak out. We're not doing that on this trip. This is a new way of being, not gonna freak out, just it's gonna work. Anyway, I won't go into it on the video, but you can go back and look at my blog post about the Corvallis trip and read about how I solved that. Um, I solved it again, the, the same thing happened again and um, but this time I knew how to solve it so I was able to do it but I still wasn't strong enough but I had brought along just the right tools which was because I had been thinking that I needed to know how to uh, fix a flat change a flat on the Brompton specifically and I hate fixing flats and I generally have just made a point I mean I've done it several times in my life but I've mostly made a point to just be like if I get a flat I'm going to a bike shop I'm gonna let them do it whatever but I know I won't always be near a bike shop, so I really kind of do need to get some practice on fixing flats. So even though I wasn't ready to actually get practice uh, changing a flat, I thought, well, the least I can do is watch a video of how to change a flat on a Brompton. So I had watched a video just like a day or two before the trip, and the guy was talking about all, you know, how to do it. It seemed really complicated, which just reinforced my idea that I didn't want to do it. But um, I was proud of myself for watching it, and he was like, okay, you're going to need this kind of wrench, you're going to need uh, pliers and needle nose pliers. And I was like, I don't have any of those things on me. They're somewhere in all these boxes that I have in here, but I don't have them with me. And that's silly because even if somebody else were to help me with the flat, I really should provide the appropriate tools. So um, just a day or two before the trip, I had rummaged around in all my various closets and boxes and everything, found those three items put them in a bag, made sure I also had a wreck, you know, some messy rags in case I needed to do anything with a chain or anything. And so I still wasn't strong enough to twist that thing off um, in Tacoma, but I remember that I had the pliers and the rag, and so I got back into my back, back into my trailer and took everything out on the sidewalk. I was there for like 15 minutes, but I totally used it and totally fixed it and just felt very competent and very pleased that I had taken the effort to do something that I could do, even though I wasn't quite ready to do everything and learn how to fix a flat. Um, and luckily I didn't have a flat on this trip. So anyway, um, I got to Seattle. I saw my sister and her partner and had a great visit for a couple of nights and our aunt and uncle um, came by. And in fact, I got, uh, th there might be a video coming that one of them took of me uh, folding and unfolding the bike, which I would like to share with you if I can get that video. Um, anyway, it was awesome. And then they, uh, my sister and her partner, um, biked with me down to, uh, the train station the next day, which I was so grateful to have them come with me. It was really nice, especially because it was downhill, 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 downhill. And I was like, oh, they're going to have to go back up these hills. So that seemed like a real <laughs> labor of love that they were willing to take me down to the train station. Um, and I got down there, my sister helped me like check the bag. The, the trailer was totally fine, checking on these various Amtrak trains and everything. I took off the wheels. They didn't make me pay extra. Like a previous blog post, I was talking about one of the Amtrak guys was trying to make me pay extra because it was a bike trailer, but I took off the wheels and you couldn't even tell it was a trailer. So, um, so that was great. And then I got home and I biked home and it was a great trip. It, it felt like just the right amount of challenge just the right amount of like me feeling like I overcame some challenges and uh, learned a few more things. I had my hydration pack with me, which was absolutely essential. And I had learned on the Corvallis practice trip that, oh, I really should have a, a hydration pack. So then I went out and, and got one of those uh, with the help of my friend, Lori, uh, who may be watching this as well. Thank you again, Lori, for that. So um, yeah, that's it. I'll, I'll post it from here. I don't know how long it is right now. Oh my gosh, it's almost 10 minutes. Um, 
this is my video thank you for watching if you watched all this way through um if you want to support me in my trip uh financially that is always welcome i have a patreon it's patreon forward slash dream into change that's for a monthly contribution if you want to do that or you can always uh send a one-time contribution to paypal if you go to paypal.me forward slash dream into change pretty sure that's what it is um you can do that as well um feel free to subscribe to my blog dream into change.com that's all the basic stuff anyway thanks so much for watching and uh stay tuned thanks bye